Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's 100% Dark Souls Remastered. I uh, hope you guys are having a good time watching this series so far. This is, I know I say this for pretty much every playthrough, but um, I have played Dark Souls so many times and just, it literally never gets old on every level. Um, you know, it's just so much, so much fun and so open-ended that I, I am really, really looking forward to recording this every single recording date uh, so hope that you guys are enjoying it as well in the last episode we entered the dark root garden i'm actually a little turned around here okay that should be where we want to go because back here should lead back to the titanite demon and of course andre of astora astoria astora uh not the lore guy if you guys don't remember um and i tend to get locations wrong Although I also do pride myself on pronouncing things correctly and also, you know, using the correct terminology and stuff. So I do try to make an effort usually to um, realize the correct, you know, way to call something. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and move on. We're entering the Deep Root Dar uh, Garden, which is a brand new area of the game. Um, and if you remember, we do need to get an item from Andre, which is worth 20,000 souls. So we have about 4,500 in the bottom right there. We need to get uh, about 15 uh, thousand more souls, right? Yeah, 15,000 more souls to be able to, uh, do something. So, we're gonna go ahead and start exploring. Let's do that right now. We're gonna start off with this particular area, uh, which we are gonna be very, very careful for. You can see there's an item way down there. If that is an item, I think it might be, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay, yeah, let's, let's be very careful here. In fact, I'm going to one-hand this. Uh, generally a really good idea to one-hand, uh, and use a shield if you're not fully confident in a specific area and especially with something like this uh, where you can easily fall off to the right uh, that is something good to do okay this is the deep root basin uh, this is kind of like a different area Ooh, there's a twinkling okay see that is a twinkling ti no I oh boy I already wasted time by talking about it wow okay let's test something out I'm gonna quit the game and return to the title menu. I thought we were out of its range. Ugh, that really sucks to miss both of those. Okay, then I'm gonna reload this, and I'm pretty sure it will not respawn. I'm pretty sure you have to, like, you just wait at a, cause it, you know, it's considered, oh, did it? Okay, I cannot believe that works. So we got two Twinkling Titanite, which is used to upgrade armor. And then we got a Titanite Chunk, which is really good because that's the next level of upgrade materials after the large Titanite Shard. Uh, I really didn't expect that to work. Well, there you go. There's a perfect tip. If you miss out on a on a Twinkling Titanite, uh, I think they're called a Crystal Lizard, uh, just reload the game and it'll respawn it. And then you can try to take it down again. And usually I'll obviously go for the kind of horizontal attacks uh, or the vertical because this one wouldn't be good. And it might be okay, but like if you do this, you see it does kind of like a vertical attack, so it's a little bit easier to hit since that thing is on the ground. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's go this way first and foremost and see what this message says. Here! Yes, there is a message here. Wow, can you believe it? Um, I think we can get that item if, even if we go down there, but maybe we do have to fall down over here. I guess we do, yeah. Okay, so there's an item here. The leather armor, gloves and boots, longbow and a feather and feather arrows, which is great because we did need a bow, uh, which we now have. Okay, now let's take a look at where we really want to drop off. I think we're definitely going to take falling damage no matter what, which I necessarily don't even... Uh, just a little bit. We can deal with that. All right, so that leads to a different area, but for now, let's go back this way and just make sure that we got everything when heading down to this particular area. Uh, yeah, because over there we dropped down. Okay, so far so good. So we're going to hold off on going that way, and we are going to go further below. And as I said, we're going to be very, very, very careful while we're doing that. Okay, as you can see, it even goes further below, which is a little hard to see because uh, all of this green kind of blends in together. Okay, be wary of lying in ambush. Yeah, well, that's a good tip because we've got another Black Knight down here. Okay, can you parry the Black Knights? I'm not sure if that was a missed parry or what. Okay, this is a little bit of a tricky area to fight this guy in. Ugh! Okay, roll out of that one. Get away a little bit. Let's try to drink an Estes Flask. He would have, he would have done really well to hit me with a uh, Lloyd's Talisman there, so I wouldn't... Ooh, that's a neat move set. Okay, trying to get a backstab off on him. There we go. 
Okay, then we can get a free R2, although it's not so free. Ooh! And we killed him. Sweet. So we got a blue Titanite chunk, uh, which, yeah, there's different types of Titanite, and each one kind of can be used to reinforce a certain type of enchantment. Um, I don't remember exactly what blue is. I think, I think like I said, I think green was... Um, I think green was uh, magic. Uh, the ones that I'm not familiar with are the ones that I never ever use. And generally, as far as I remember, they're bad. They're considered bad. Um, but regardless, here is the Grass Crest Shield, which is a shield that you probably see a ton of players of Dark Souls use uh, for a very simple reason. If we go down to it, okay, and we take a look at its description, old medium sh uh, metal shield of unknown origin. The Grass Crest is slightly lightly imbued with magic which slightly speeds stamina recovery now you see in the top left we've got that new icon with the shield and like the three green arrows that means our stamina is going to regen let's just do a test by the way you don't actually have to use the shield uh you can just put it on your back like so which is exactly what i'm going to be doing so let's use up all of our stamina by rolling and then take a look at how fast it regenerates okay now let's do the same thing with it unequipped Man, that is really noticeable. I remember testing that out before and not thinking it was that noticeable, but that is actually really noticeable to me now. Okay, so this is like one of, if not the best shields in the entire game, used by pretty much everybody. In fact, there's going to be some Dark Souls purists watching this video and saying, wow, GV, really? You're going to really use the Grass Crush shield? Uh, yes, I am, because I'll tell you why. First of all, I love stamina regeneration effects in Dark Souls. Uh, they're very fun to have on. And then B, it promotes me to use, uh, you know, any weapon two-handed. Uh, it promotes me to want to do this two-handed. So that's why I'm going to use it, because it's going to give me more of an incentive to uh, try and be a little bit more ballsy, deal more damage with the Gargoyle Tail Axe uh, two-handed, while also getting a bonus by just having this shield on my back. So we are going to definitely be switching out that spider shield for this. Now, we have an elevator here, which you could definitely figure out before this part. Uh, if you're not kind of getting how Dark Souls works, every area links to each other pretty much. So this links to yet another part of Dark Souls. And where this goes, anybody have a guess? Anybody, anybody have any sort of guess? Uh, it is the Valley of the Drakes. So I'm not even gonna mess with these things up ahead. <laughs> uh, they're, they're not too tough or anything, but they are, they definitely could ruin my day. And when I do tackle this specific area, I want to come back uh, from a different side. And just to kind of get you on the same, um, get you all on the same idea, if we went left over there, it would go to the beginning of that Blight Town shortcut. If you remember when I was saying you could use the key to unlock the door and then go through the, the smaller area of Blight Town to get to the bottom, that is over there. And then it links up to over here, and then it links up to this little um, shortcut that takes you back to the Dark Root Basin or, or whatever it's called, Deep, Deep Root Basin, whatever it's called. I always get those names confused. Uh, so yes, this is a shortcut, and then you probably noticed that there was a bonfire in that cave as well. So it's kind of a little area for a respite. Um, so yeah, you can come up here and this kind of just links into each other. Notice I did not rest because I don't want to go back. Although really all that we killed was the... Actually, yeah, he's not even going to respawn. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna keep moving anyways. All right, so now we need to go back up and then go to that path that I was telling you about earlier. And this is where this playthrough will get really interesting. Um, especially if you're really enjoying watching this playthrough so far because you don't really know what to expect. You know, expect everything is different in Dark Souls, like there's a new enemy around every corner. Well, you're going to really like this part of the game. Um, and I hope that I don't... I didn't rest at the bonfire, which means that it won't... Okay, you know what? I actually have to rest at that bonfire uh, because there is a very high chance that we can die here, and I would uh, like not to, actually. So, bear with me. Ah! Almost rolled to my death over there. Bear with me uh, while I go back to that bonfire really quick because I'm not actually sure if just turning the bonfire on, you know, activating it, um, I don't think it counts as you... You using it. All right, let's repair everything first of all. And uh, let's reinforce a weapon. I don't think we have what we need to reinforce this. What do we need? We need one more large Titanite shard, but it's but since it's already... Oh, crap. Yeah, and then it would go to nine. Huh. 
Okay, well, that's really good. Yeah, we only need... Okay, so as soon as we get one um, large Titanite Shard, we can upgrade this Gargoyle Tail Axe to level 9. And that'll probably be where we stop it. Although, I'm wondering now if the chunks will come into play. Uh, the thing is, a lot of different weapons have different ways of upgrading and use different resources. Uh, like I said, the Demon Titanite is used for the Demon Weapons, for instance. Uh, so we'll just see. But we need we do need to keep an eye out for one um, large Titanite, and then we can upgrade this to nine. All right. Wish me luck, ladies and gents, because <laughs> uh, over here in this direction is a lot of a lot of bad things, as you guys will see. So yes, please and thank you. Wish me luck. First of all, in the distance there, you might see something squirming around. That is not a trick of the light. That is something big. Yeah. And, um, okay. Well, let's try to do something here. So we've got this guy over to my left as well. He's not a good guy. He wants to deal damage to me, but... Okay, see all that stuff coming over here? That stuff will kill these guys. These guys are crystal golems. And that projectile, those projectiles being launched over here, will kill these guys uh, who drop blue titanite chunks. Okay, we can't get hit ourselves. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can kind of use this thing to take out these guys. Um, but you also have to be really careful to not get hit by those, by those projectiles as well. Um, they're sort of like heat-seeking missiles. They will, they will go to the ends of the earth to hit you and kill you. And so if you see them coming, and they have big AoE uh, damage too. If you see them coming, yeah, definitely, definitely roll. But we're going to hold off on that for just now. And we are going to head up over this way. Where something very, very interesting awaits. This is also another area of the game that links up to an earlier area. Kudos to anybody that can kind of figure it out. Good luck! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can kind of already see something through the door there. I don't even want to really open this door. Um, should I... Uh, Wait, what? It's locked. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> it's locked. What? What in the world? And now there's a fog door there, which means I think I'm being invaded. I think I am being invaded. Okay, so there must be a key that I somehow didn't get just yet. Huh. So yeah, I must have missed out on an area that I would have normally gotten the key. I really hope it's not in Blight Town. Um... That really sucks. Yeah, Dark Spirit Vincent 7 has invaded. Okay, just as I figured, we are getting invaded. Usually when um, things get covered by fog doors like that, uh, a lot of new players are like, what the heck? Uh, that basically just means that, yeah, you're, you're being invaded. Uh, so a player has actually invaded my game. A real-life player. And now I'm actually in a position to fight him. Earlier on, I wasn't. Um, so, I don't know where he is. He They kind of just spawn wherever. Um, and it, it depends on each, it changes for each area as well, like the spawn, the spawn points are uh, different for each little area. This place is not somewhere that I've been invaded uh, frequently, if ever, so I have no idea where he's going to spawn, but I'm confident enough that I'm going to, I'm going to try to clear out this crystal golem if I can. Oh my god, okay. And I gotta keep an, I gotta keep an eye out for him, because he might be the type of guy that wants to capitalize on me fighting other things. Ow! Okay, and by the way, when I take damage like that, he's going to know where I am. Uh, he's going to see my health bar on the map. So let's drink this. We need to kill this guy here. Okay, down he goes. We still got the Hydra, so we really cannot... Ow! We really... Yeah, see, we really cannot go over there because the range... Okay, there he is. The range is very big. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Is he just going to rush into fighting, or is he going to bow or anything? Is he trying to aggro Havel the Rock into attacking me? Because I don't think that's going to work. There's a fog door. Ooh, notice that cartwheel animation? Ooh, what's he doing? I didn't even know you could get up there. He might be trying to be a jerk by, um... He might be trying to be a jerk by, like, staying up there when I can't get to him. 
Because I'm not sure if I can even make... I can, I'm not sure if I, if I can even make it up there without that. Uh, you'll notice he had a cartwheel animation. I don't have that just yet. Yeah, hi. That's cool and all, man. Um, but, you know, I, I'm doing a Let's Play here. So if we could, like, you know, fight it out, that'd be neat. Um, I, I don't know if he's going to try to be a jerk by just not moving from up there. But if he is, I'm just going to go fight the Hydra. All right, well, if you, if you want to fight... I mean, yeah, that's neat. If you want to fight, though, I'll be over by the Hydra, okay? It's going to be really hard to actually fight him while fighting the, whilst fighting the Hydra. Um, and I wanted to explain the Hydra, too. Yeah, okay, well, he just took a lot of damage there. All right. Now he's going to try to aggro the Hydra. Really, man? I don't think he can take damage from uh, that stuff over there. This is, like, about the most annoying uh, most annoying point that this guy could come in because, yeah, this was a really cool part of the game that I wanted to fully explain. So, yeah, if we could just fight instead of you just doing some hijinks. Come on. Okay. He's going to try to do it again. I can do the same thing. Yeah, he's just messing around because he's getting a backstab with his fists. Um, and he's just going to try to... Yeah, kill yourself. Thank you so much. Okay. That was a lot of fun. Wow. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, so yeah, sometimes... I don't know. You just deal with... Okay, so he, he didn't have... We got a portion of his souls in the bottom right there. It was only like 1,500. That wasn't a lot. Um, and I thought we got humanity, but I guess we can't because he... We can't loot his, his dead body. Now, this is odd because I swear to God, I thought this just opened automatically, but it's locked. So we don't have the key. We're going to have to get the key. Um, I don't remember where it is, but it's 100% playthrough, so of course we'll find it. Anyways, moving on. Um, this is the Hydra. I didn't even want to spoil it by calling it its name, but it is, of course, a Hydra. So, as you can imagine, it's pretty challenging with it constantly firing all this crap at me. So what you need to do is rush up to it as quickly as possible. Oh, God, this thing is so scary looking. And then, oh, sometimes it'll still do the AoE, but you want to drag it close. You do not move past a certain point. Okay, there we go. Now, it's going to attack you like so, and you want to basically... You want to basically... No! Wait till its heads are close and attack them. You can see we're already chopping the heads off. Okay, you just gotta watch out for its AoE because it will still launch AoE at you. Yep, see? You gotta watch out for its AoE. You just want it to attack physically. No! Come on! It's being a pussy! <laughs> come on, dude! There we go. Okay. Get to a head, and then chop it off. Nice. You're making good work of the Hydra. Alright, come on. You gotta stand kinda near it so that it doesn't do the AoE. You want it to... Stop it! Man, this thing is being real scared. Stop it! Just do the it just attack me! This is unreal. It never normally does it this much. Come on. Yeah, so it has two alternating attacks. Jesus Christ! It's just not wanting. Yeah, now you do it. Okay. One and two. That's what you get. Keep going, come on. Keep going. Yeah, so when it, it when it does the shriek, it's going to jump out at you like this. Oh my god, isn't that scary? <laughs> that is so scary. <sighs> Alright, let's go. Come on. Oh my god, that is so that's freaking me out kinda. They really made this thing terrifying to look at. Gotcha! Okay, you can see its health bar in the middle there, kinda. Uh, it's only got two more heads. Gotcha. Okay, come on. Thank you so much for actually physically attacking now. I appreciate it. Uh, as you deal damage to this thing... As you deal damage to this thing, it obviously loses heads. But as far as I remember, it's actually more based on... Oh, man. He's going to make this really tough to finish him off. We're going to grab this. The Knight Helm. The Knight Set. 
Uh, yeah, actually, how am I going to... I can't even really get to him there, um, which really sucks. I might have to equip, like, a longbow. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of get close. I kind of have to goad him into getting a little bit closer and then rush in when he gets... Yeah, I'm not even going to bother with that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, equip the longbow. I'm not even going to be scared about him hitting me. Okay, what are you doing? I'm, like, freaking out. Okay. Now, we already have arrows equipped uh, just naturally. So, now we can fire kind of at his midpoint there. See, we're dealing 23 damage. Yeah, as far as I know, it's more about when you deal enough damage. It's not about cutting off all the heads or anything like that. And down he goes. Down the Hydra goes. How many souls do we get? 5,000 souls. We get a Dragon Scale. We get the Dusk Crown Ring. Okay. So, yeah, that is something that intimidates a ton of players, obviously, because it's huge. It fires at you from afar like that. Uh, but in reality, the Hydra is not that bad to deal with. Um, so, if you missed out on kind of the strategy there, it's basically that if you're far away from it, it's going to fire those blasts at you. And that's what sucks. Those things have a huge range and, um, you know, will just deal a ton of damage to you. So, you want to get as close as possible, as quickly as possible. And then, honestly, it makes no sense, but you can just shield uh, most of its attacks and then just attack the head. Like I said, it kind of has a shared uh, hit point. So, you can deal damage to it from afar. You don't have to chop the heads off. Um, but the heads are obviously the easiest thing to go for. Now, a thing that always, 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 always kills new players is that there is a drop right here. Can you see it? Can you see it? I'm, like, almost at the edge at it right now. If I were to move forward just a tiny bit, I would fall down to my death. I don't know why they put that here. It kind of makes sense because, obviously, the Hydra's not going to be able to be in, you know, a pool of water if it was only, like, knee-deep. But, um, yeah, if you go over there, you will fall into your death, and I have done it many times, so don't do that. Now, that is the Hydra down. We're going to go over this way now, and like I said, be really careful about the, the drop. Um, I think you're generally safe over here. But I'm also not... There's a ladder there, by the way. Keep that in mind. I think we're generally safe, but I'm also not going to test it. Uh, you can see there's some blood stains and things. Yeah, you know, I'm not even going to worry about it because I'm pretty sure all of this area back here is totally fine. But there is a secret area in the back over here. Okay, now this is kind of what I was worried about. Is the fact that there's nothing back here, right? I did it. Okay, there's nothing back here which is not good. Um, but I think we can try the same strategy, and I don't think it matters kind of where I do this, but I'm going to just try to make sure a little bit. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to quit the game. I think we're going to try the same strategy as we did with the um, Crystal Lizard. We're going to try to reload something into our game, basically. And let's see if it works. It worked with the Crystal Lizard, so I wouldn't be surprised. And it did work. Check that shit out. Okay, now we've got a golden crystal golem. And I think he's tough, if I remember right. Or at least tougher. Tougher than his friends. Okay, that's an AoE attack, so you want to get away from that. And down he goes. <laughs> and an NPC has, has, <laughs> has jumped out of him. I always thought that was so weird. So, does thou who rescued me? Most gracious, I am deeply obliged. I am Dusk of Ulysseo. I cometh from an age long before thine. I cannot stay here for long. So, before I disappear, allow me to ask one thing. My home, Ulysseo is the home of ancient sorceries. My hope is to pass this profound knowledge to thee with thine approval. Would this be of assistance to thee? Obviously, yes. My heartfelt thanks. I am pleased beyond words. Then I shout, engrave my signature. If thou art in need, pray summon me from my signature. It seems that my time is done. May the great flames guide thee. Bye-bye! 
Okay, that is DLC. There's one DLC for Dark Souls, and it is called, uh... Oh, shoot, I don't even remember what it's called. Uh, but it, yeah, there's one DLC, and this involves the DLC. So, you come back here, and you reload your save if this guy has spawned. You kill him, you release Dusk of Ulysseel, and then there's something else that we can do, as we will see in a second here. Also, we did get a ring, um, from killing the Hydra. Dusk Crown Ring grants extra magic castings, but halves... HP. That's obviously related to the NPC there, Dusk. Uh, by the way, the rusted iron ring which we have on uh, is helping us out greatly here because we can run around in the water. Just like with Blight Town, if we didn't have this ring on, uh, we would be slow as heck right now and it would be very, very annoying trying to go throughout all of this area. So keep that in mind. Um, the Dusk, the rusted iron ring is amazing and you want to get it as soon as you possibly can. Okay, so we're gonna remember that there's a ladder there, but we're gonna head back over here for now. If you notice, she said that if we ever need her, summon her. Well, that means literally, because she's put a summon sign right over here. Uh, re dude, really? Again with this guy? Oh man. Like I, like I, I don't. I have no problem if it's actually a person that wants to fight, but people that just want to like, you know, meme around. It's like, okay, great, yeah, that'd be fine if I wasn't doing a freaking playthrough. Oh, we still have a crystal golem over here. Ah, so annoying. And yeah, he's just trying to meme around. I don't, I don't even know what his goal is. I guess just to show people that you can get up there, which obviously is crazy. Wow, what is happening here? Okay, um, and what's really unfortunate about this is that you cannot quit the game. <laughs> you cannot quit the game when somebody has invaded you like this. You have to just kind of deal with it. So I will deal with it, and I will see you guys once it has been resolved. Okay, once again, he's killed himself. And once again, he gave us a little bit of souls. That really was nothing. I, huh. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at least he's not a total dick and he's knowing that, okay, that, this is cool, man, but I kind of want to, you know, do some shit in my game. Um, so at least he's not, at least he's not just, like, staying up there forever. Yeah, from what I understand, I guess you just need the, uh, the thing that I'm not going to spoil, because I know, you know, what it is that, that lets him do that little cartwheel. What the heck? Why is she here? I'm Dusk of Lisa. It is an honor to see thee again. I shall follow thine wishes. That's very odd, considering that I didn't actually summon her, I thought. But yeah, here is her summon sign, and you can summon her to learn the proper bow gesture. So make sure that you don't miss out on that. For a very long time, I was trapped within the crystal golem. From my home, I was taken and banished to a plane of distortion. It was there that thou came to my rescue, long after I had relinquished all hope. So gleeful was I. My faith reneweth. The sorceries of Ulysseel differ from the magic of thy mate. It is difficult to explain. Ulysseel's sorceries are... What I can say? <laughs> They're somewhat of an approximation. Thine sorceries are more straightforward, negating all but thyself. Dost thou not find some fascination in these discrepancies? And she is correct. In the DLC area, there's a different type. I think it's still technically considered a sorcery, but they're they're called something else. I forget what. But they're used with it. Well, they're used with a catalyst, is what I'm what I'm saying. But they're called something else. I, I forget what they're called. Hexes or something like that. The sorceries of it is is that the sorcery is that. Okay, so we can buy some stuff from her. Hidden body, which I believe makes you invisible. Cast light, uh, I guess just makes some light. Repair, which repairs your weapon, which is pretty much useless since you're useless since you're always able to repair your weapons at any point. Chameleon is a real interesting one. Uh, this is one where you will literally turn into an object from the current area. So for instance, if you're like a castle, there's tons of chairs and... Um, benches and things, you, you'll turn into a bench that blends in with a particular particular area, and people won't know unless they know exactly what type of objects are in that area, and then you can, uh, can surprise somebody. There's lots of videos on YouTube where people use this spell in lots of funny ways. Uh, and then hidden weapon is interesting as well. Hide your weapon um, so that you can kind of trick people into not knowing what you're going to be using against them. Uh, she also has the Ulysseal Ivory Catalyst, uh, which we're not going to worry about since we are not a if thou art in need, sorcerer. Pray summon me again. I wish to be of assistance. May the flames guide thee. 
you already were of assistance because you gave me one of the best emotes in the game, which we're going to go ahead and switch out now. We're going to switch out bow for the proper bow. And now we do a very, 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 very proper, very low bow. <laughs> and that's how you kind of know the people that are in on how to get that gesture as opposed to the people that just use the regular bow gesture. Okay, ladies and gents, uh, we are getting up to the time here. We're going to get right next to this ladder, and we are going to call it a video. And in the next episode, we will head up that ladder. And by the way, just to give you some insight, that $20,000 crest that we can buy from Andre lets you go in through the front way. We went in through the back way because we have to kill the Hydra, obviously. And now if we go up here, you don't have to buy the crest. You can go around that big door. Uh, but we will see that big door as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to support me, please remember to like the video and consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. The link is in the description. Bye-bye. Hey, it's me, GV. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to support me, please consider leaving a like and or becoming a patron over on Patreon. I also stream on Twitch if you'd like to catch me live and come say hello. The schedule is below in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.